I'm Shay Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is the Chair of Terry Uranium, Andrew Vigar. Andrew, how are you today? Very well, thank you, Shay, and good to join you again. I'm thrilled to have you on because I'd really like to touch on your expertise in the uranium sector. Now, you've been active in the uranium sector, both uh, locally and internationally for the past 20 years. Uh, and how can we say that our opposition leader, Peter Dutton's recent uh, nuclear energy policy has caused quite a stir? So I'd love to have you sort of help us unpack it and tell us whether it's feasible or not. And I guess my first point is, can this actually happen or is this very much, you know, is he asking for unicorns here? No, it can very much happen. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that the nuclear debate has become politicised, which it really shouldn't be. Um, you know, Australia entered into the AUKUS deal with the US and the UK on a, on a bipartisan basis. And that was strongly supported by all sides. Well, not all sides, the Greens don't like it, but, it, but uh, all sides of mainstream politics. And I, I thought that was an excellent thing. Um, I'm a little disappointed that it's become politicised um, because that can distort the facts a little bit. I'm a scientist, obviously, and I prefer to deal with facts. And uh, we've been active in this space, as you said, for a long time now, uh, because it is uh, one of the primary baseload energy sources available to any country in the world, including Australia. Uh, and we've been uh, ignoring that for a long time. So I guess I'm pleased that it's out there a bit more in the public domain and uh, ordinary people out there are, are taking a bit more attention. I'm not particularly pleased with it becoming politicised. Um, I, I might touch on the politics of this later on. Let's talk about some of the facts that we've got because it has been a little bit loose with the facts up until now. Tell me, do you think the proposed seven sites around Australia and using near end of life coal mines, do you think that's feasible? I think that's an excellent way to go and that was very wise because really all that's being done there is picking up on the US who of course are major partners with us and, and the UK um, in our nuclear subs and, the, and that the US is very actively going down exactly this path. So it's not as if uh, they're suggesting something where Australia would be a leader. Uh, we would be very much following what the US is doing now, not, not what they're thinking about doing, but what they're actually doing. Um, they put uh, the US um, Department of Energy, so this is the US government. Uh, remember, this is under uh, a, a Democrat government or a left-leaning government, uh, so similar to the Labor Party, have actually come out with a policy that's very, very similar to what the uh, Liberal National Coalition have come out with and are actively funding it and pursuing it. And they're looking at uh, something like 300 sites in the US being converted from coal to nuclear not six or seven, but 300. Uh, and, they're, and they're actively funding and following that path. And uh, there's a lot of local support, which is interesting because I see that uh, at local level in Australia, there is very, quite, very strong support because of course, this is, this is high end technology. This, this is jobs uh, and using all the infrastructure that's currently existing from your coal fired power station uh, cuts the cost of putting a nuclear power station on the same uh, spot by about a third. So, so you're, you're saving a third of your infrastructure because, of course, the lakes are already there. The power distribution lines are already there. The workforce is already there. Um, all you're doing is replacing essentially, and, and a lot of the turbines and the actual switchyards are also reused. So all you're replacing is the uh, power generation part, which is the boiler uh, with a nuclear reactor. Um, that said, these are specialised reactors specifically designed to replace uh, coal, uh, coal generation. Uh, and they are currently, the, the engineering's done, uh, the trial plants are currently under construction in the US. So you'll hear a bit of press going about, you know, where are they, where are they, let's see them operating. Give us a year or two and there'll be, there'll be a lot of them operating in the US. Um, so I thought it was quite smart of Dutton to say, we might go SMRs or we might go full scale um, uh, uh, generation plants, you know, 1000 megawatts or more. Uh, it, that's fairly smart because uh, the, the larger plants are proven and operating plenty of examples around the world. Uh, SMRs are a new technology and not yet up and op operating. One of the questions I have for you is that we lack the intellectual capital within the country to actually build these. So how is uh, 2035, just 11 years from now, a realistic target to have one of these operational? Uh, for an SMR, it's certainly possible. 
uh, even for a large scale reactor. Um, the actual construction time is not the issue. The construction time is the permitting uh, involved in, in the construction of the plant and the dealing with dealing with the uh, waste and how you handle that, that whole issue. That's the thing that takes a long period of time. Uh, construction itself is only about four to five years. So it's, it's not huge. Um, the, the, the issue then comes down to um, uh, politics and timing. Uh, if we go large scale reactor, th then that's an off the shelf design proven. And I noticed he mentioned two designs. One of them is Westinghouse, which I, I don't know if people realize is now owned by Cameco, uh, which is a Canadian company, um, very smart investment by them. Uh, but a lot of the US reactors are Westinghouse. So, that, so this is a, a standard um, uh, US design. Uh, the other one that he mentioned was the uh, South Koreans um, who have just completed four uh, large scale reactors in the UAE, which are now all coming online, uh, two, two are online, two have been commissioned. Um, and the advantage of course is the, using the Koreans is that we know that they are very efficient and they build on time on budget. And those four reactors in the UAE were on time on budget. Um, so, the, and these are proven designs. Uh, so I think he's being very smart in saying that we're not really sure which way we'll go. And let's let's study this for a year or two and decide what's the best for Australia. Because both produce the same, same result, which is base load energy to firm the grid and provide 24 seven power, uh, which renewables can't do. Um, listen, we're going to finish today's conversation where we started, and that is lightly touching on politics. Uh, now, Australia has <laughs> basically, uh, why not? Uh, Australia has had a ban on nuclear energy for, well, it's illegal to run nuclear energy power stations. However, uh, Dutton was part of the coalition government and they were in power for a considerable period of time. The cynic in me wants to know, why now? Why not when his government had, pa had power then? Why are they starting the conversation now? Yeah, I think that's a good question. And uh, it's really a move, a move in public opinion. Um, so we've seen a, a huge shift in, in the carbon debate and, and the, the fact that the general community do want zero carbon by 2050. Uh, and that's happened quite quickly in the last few years. Uh, and then also the, the advent of the small modular reactors and, and the, they're coming onto the market and now becoming a proven technology. That's happened in the last two or three years. There was a lot of talk about it. There's been talk about it since the 1950s, um, but it hasn't actually happened. So it's now happening. So, so those two things are coming together, if you like, in the same place. Uh, and, and the public debate has sort of happened and, and it's, it's reached the point where one of the major political parties has picked it up or the major coalition have picked it up. So, that, so that's a big change. Uh, as far as uh, political change, which is all we're talking about as far as uh, a ban on nuclear power or ban on expiration, um, that's a political debate. And uh, that, th that will be solved by the politicians removing the ban. I mean, it doesn't make any sense from a scientific or commercial uh, point of view. If you go to Europe or the US, uh, banks will finance nuclear reactors. It's not a problem. Um, it, 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 the money's out there. Uh, but we just can't do it in Australia because we have a political debate. Uh, debate. So hopefully that will be resolved and, and we'll have a, as we did with AUKUS, a bipartisan approach. So I'm very much looking forward to the Labor Party coming on board as well. I look forward to that as well. Uh, also to given Australia's uh, natural abundant uranium resources, we would be crazy to not encourage ourselves to become energy independent. Uh, listen, Andrew, you, I'm not allowed to have favourites, but I could absolutely talk to you about this all day. You're an incredible depth of knowledge on this subject. Um, I want to say thank you so much for being here, carving out 10 minutes for after having this chat today. Uh, I look forward to progressing the nuclear energy conversation in Australia. So thank you very much for your time. Anytime, Shay. It was my pleasure.